Hello everyone and welcome back. Bryce Bind is quite a fantastic exotic to use for locking out areas one after another, which saves a ton of ability energy when needing to redeploy it. However, have you thought about enhancing the given area by applying strand to the mix? If not, then this final warning and Briar's Mind combo is literally a match made in heaven. It has everything you would want, from healing, debuffs, damage boost, AoE lockdown, continuous damage, etc. All the stuff you would expect for an endgame build and it's something to use for background type GMs. So why don't we make a start and see where it goes from here? Start with your traits, you're going to want to have child with your gods where upon creating a rift, you'll cast a void soul. Damaging a target with Void Soul will drain them and give you back grenade, melee, class ability, and health for the user. And then you want Feed the Void where defeating a target with Void ability grants Devour. Now using Bryce Bind Area of Effect with Extended Effect will allow the build to react in the right correspondence once our weapons of choice and fragments are added into the fray. Fragments used are Echo Remnant where Lingering Grenade Durations are increased, Echo Explosion where Void ability finder blows cause targets to explode, Echo of Harvest where defeating weakened targets grant Void Breach and Orb of Power and Echo of Persistence where Void buffs applied to you are increased. Void Souls can't be improved on further outside of the use of the exotics and Echo Exclusion effect. This alone means focus on grenades or midi usage does get increased for the player's choice. Using Vortex Grenade with Void Souls effect will allow players to maximize damage since having both Void Soul and Devour on hand will grant grenade energy back upon kills made. This allows us to use the stronger grenades in our collection without fear of the high cooldown getting to us. It's then recommended to have Echo of Harvest since its effect is widespread the moment Void Souls are active. So this alone will help both you and your team build up armor charges, abilities, supers, etc. in a short time. For the mods and stats, recovery at tier 10 and your discipline at tier 10 are the main two stats to invest in for the build. Now, recovery at tier 10 will provide users a 48 second cooldown upon use. This is an easy stat to reach tier 10 without the need of mods as long as you invest in the high recovery stat armor. However, having bolstering destination tends to be the only one mod I would highly recommend players to have and keep when using any build that focuses on getting class ability back. We also have the Reaper and Powerful Attraction mod that will also help with the overall armor charge effect. So in general, this stat here will work out fine as long as we keep supporting it the way it's done. Your discipline will be at tier 10 for a 1 minute 16 second cooldown via Vortex Grenade. Although the stat is high, Having Devourer and Child of the Old Gods in hand does allow us to reduce the cooldown rate of using Vortex Grenades more often. With this in mind, and with how often Child of the Old Gods react, means that we can use this to our advantage when combining it further with Grenade Kickstart for a 34.4% or basically 4 armor charges. Then if you wish for backup, you can add on the Innovation mod for a 10% and the Bomber mod for a 12% buff as well. All of these in the hand should allow you to have at least a full charge back or at least half a charge back depending on the situation on the hand. This section now focuses on the armor charges and additional mods applied. Charged up times 1 will expand how many charges we can carry, while stacks on stacks makes it so that each orb power collected will be 2. After that, having the Strand Cypher mod, Reaper and Powerful Attraction mod will further help with creating orbs at a faster rate and also collecting them as well. Since the build does not need anything more specific from here, having the heavy ammo finder, reserves and scavenger mods is all you'll need from here on then. So for the weapons, we have the final warning sidearm which is a unique strand tracking sidearm that not many people tend to talk about. As the seasonal anti-barrier mod is sidearm this time, I was very much surprised not to see many people use the following sidearm the moment it was made apparent and with how strong its perk is. Generally, its ability to apply unraveling quickly allows us to build up even more damage in a short time frame compared to most other exotics available. This makes it perfect to use against a barrier champ, but also bosses the mini bosses as you can use this to apply a continuous burst, swap to your other weapon for more damage, and then repeat. Now, you'll see what I mean by this in my video, but such a strat does provide its usefulness when things do get a bit too hairy. For heavy, we have the semi tissue rocket launcher with hatchling and field prep. And since you can use a void heavy instead, 
you do have multiple ways of covering this heavy area as your choice. Ideally, the weapon will help with taking out large groups of enemies caught within my Void Soul, which will also grant me the ability energy back as well. At the same time, having the Unraveling Orbs and Horde Shuttle Seasonal Mods will enhance both our Strand weapons and pretty much completely set up a combining both Void and Strand together. A Briar's Bind has got to be one of the best Void options to pick when you want to fully utilize debuffs, ability regen, and fast lockdown methods without ever needing to expand onto your other abilities. And it does show it really well when used in high level activities. Although Seekun is still a good option to pick for the end game possibilities it covers, a Briar's Bind is more simple and straight to the point. Providing users with an increased duration time and damage and can also be picked up does allow us to repeatedly have the item on show like a mini turret on standby. And once a target has been eliminated, you can then go ahead and pick it back up and repeat as many times as you like. In endgame, this is generally wanted for locking down huge groups of enemies that may spawn out of the blue, and using this to slowly lock down an area one after another is a game changer. With that in mind, I wanted to expand this lockdown nature by applying the final warning strand sidearm for the unraveling effect it produces. Locking on and hip firing the weapon can trigger the unraveling nature which will do continuous damage and also spread to others after death. Combining the two does create a death spiral that not many enemies can avoid as they'll be continuously attacked and also drained, all without even you needing to lift a finger. And if you want to be even more creative right there, you can apply Scorch Burn to the target if you have a solar weapon, Flint Striker, and Kindling Trigger, Seasonal Monster Boots. So is this worth the investment? In a number of ways, yes, with a few caveats. With the build, it's ease of use and ability to lock down and build up damage in a short time frame compared to other builds present does allow players a quick way of dealing with grouped up enemies that come in multiple forms and requires multiple different types of weapons to deal with them. This playstyle is fantastic for generally all of the battleground based grandmasters, which will send wave after wave of enemies to your direction with no slowing down. At the same time, it gives you a bigger reason to use the final warning this season as it does get overlooked when compared to many other side in game, and yet it still packs a punch. The con though, which honestly everyone can see it from afar, is that it lacks range when using the sidearm, which means that you need to get within a good distance to activate its perks. This can be 50-50 at times and is very unpredictable with how the enemies may react. At the same time, activating an exotic effect will lock you into animation, which can lead to a few issues if certain enemies rush you. It all depends on how you time your attacks as launching a Void Soul and then unraveling rounds should be straight and easy process. The only risk here is needing to cover the range with the sidearm, but this overall is a small issue when looked at from an endgame environment. I highly recommend you give this build a try, this season, while you still can. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on content shared then please leave a comment below. While at the same time if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future, then leave a like and a sub while here. I will leave a dim link for the build below, and if you want more stuff like this then I have a playlist available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.